everyone and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we need to talk about the new RTX 2080 Max-Q graphics cards and how much of a ripoff they are. We're going to be analyzing all the RTX graphics cards, the price to performance ratios, whether they're worth buying over the GTX equivalents from last year, how much of a performance gain do you actually get by upgrading to an RTX card. Let's talk about it. Here we go. So to start things off, we have a 3D Mark Firestrike graphics score. So this is a comparison of 1080p gaming across all of the cards from this year and last year. Let's see how everything shakes out. Well, the RTX 2080, as you'd expect, is ahead of the GTX 1080, but only by about 5%, which is insanely minimal, very tiny improvement considering that this is a new next generation card. So, I mean, if you're gonna be gaming at 1080p, some high frame rate gaming, that is a very minute difference in performance for the amount you're gonna have to pay to get that new card. Now, the Aorus X7 managed to get 21,799 in the Firestrike graphics test, while the Zephyrus GX501 with the 1080 Max-Q got 18,817. Now, the new 17-inch version of the GX701 one Zephyrus. This is the 17 inch version, which should provide better cooling and only got 18,006 in a benchmark by ultrabookreview.com. And that is an extremely disappointing score. If we're being honest, we got new technology underperforming. Okay. Now the folks over at ultrabook.com did OC the GX701. So you've got the overclock to get it up to 20,265. Now that is a significantly better score, but that's only after manually overclocking the device, which the vast majority of users will not know how to do. And then I also found another laptop to compare with here, the Acer Predator Triton, also featuring the RTX 2080 Max Q OC with a score of 20,703. Yes, the RTX 2080 Max-Q is outperforming the GTX 1080 Max-Q when you are overclocking the RTX 2080 Max-Q, but when you're not overclocking it, it's underperforming compared to the GTX 1080 Max-Q, uh, and this could be for a number of reasons. Maybe the drivers need to be updated, more optimized. It could also be related to the fact that now you have these RTX cores and tensor cores taking up a big portion of the GPU die, um, making it less efficient. We don't know exactly why it's underperforming but we just know that it's underperforming. Taking a look at the 3D Mark Time Spy, we actually have the GX701 OC edition taking the lead, but it's all very, very similar levels of performance. Synthetic benchmarks are great and all, but how does this actually pan out in actual gameplay? So let's take a look at three different games benchmarked with the old GTX 1080 versus the new RTX 2080 Max-Q. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we have the Aorus X7 outperforming all of the RTX 2080 Max-Q graphics cards. In Far Cry 5, we have the Aorus X7 outperforming all of the RTX Max-Q graphics cards. And last but not least, we have the Shadow of Mordor benchmark on Ultra. And you can see that the Aorus X7 only barely beats out the GX701 when it's not overclocked. And then when you overclock the GX701, you do get better performance. So we do have some examples here of the RTX 2080 Max-Q, especially in the Triton, actually outperforming the GTX 1080. So if you played like a ton of different games, benchmarked a ton of different games, there are gonna be games where the RTX cards really win and games where they really lose and the GTX cards are gonna have more value. It's just such a bad value proposition that unless you absolutely need the most mobile laptop possible with the most performance possible. It just doesn't even make sense from a performance to dollar standpoint. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, you can currently actually still buy the GX501 with the 1080 Max-Q and it only costs $2,029. Currently on Amazon, there's like five left in stock. So if you wanna get one, that's a freaking fantastic deal. I'll have a link in the description down below. Uh, now, the performance per dollar, we've got nine points per dollar for the GX501. We've got the Aorus X7 coming in second with a points per dollar of 7.3, outperforming even the overclocked 2080 Max-Q laptops. The worst case scenario, the GX701, coming in at 5.5 per dollar. It's almost exactly the same performance and it costs $1,300 more. This is an extreme, extreme example. I'm sure that this level of performance disparity to price is not gonna be true of all RTX laptops, especially 
the the new RTX non Max Q versions will probably have a better performance to dollar ratio. So that's what's happening on the high end market. How does the low end segment pan out? Well, last year's GTX 1070 got 17,600, when this year's RTX 2070 got 19,353. There's a pretty significant gap here in performance. So yes, the RTX 2070 full non Max Q is probably worth it. Taking a look at the Max-Q variant only scored 16,490 versus the GTX 1070 17,600. So we've got over a thousand point difference. So I mean, if you're looking for a cheap laptop that has good performance, I would say look at a GTX 1070 laptop. It's gonna be outperforming the RTX 2070 Max-Q variant laptops overall as a whole. Now there is one other major, major surprise. We've got the RTX 2060 with a massive performance improvement compared to the GTX 1060. How big of a difference is it? Well, the GTX 1060 and the Zephyrus GX 531 got 11,300 and the RTX 2060 and the XMG Ultra 15 got 15,389. That is more than a 4,000 point gap or about a 35% improvement in performance and that is just freaking huge. So if you're in the market for a mid-range gaming laptop, the RTX 2060 is a really good option for you, especially since it's gonna be more competitively priced now, I recently did a breakdown of the best RTX 2060 laptops available for under $1,500. If you want to check out that video, I'll have a link in the description or at the end of this video. So what did we learn from all of these benchmarks? Well, first of all, if you're going to get an RTX laptop, which may not be advisable if you're on a budget, but if you are going to get an RTX laptop, don't get an RTX 2080 Max Q and a super thin laptop. That thin laptop really cuts down on the graphics card's ability to put out frames per second, uh, but it didn't cut down on the price point, you've got a very small performance improvement for a massive $600 price hike. Second general rule is that the RTX 2060, 2070, and 2080 all have performance improvements, but especially the RTX 2060 has the biggest performance jump from the GTX 1060, the RTX 2070 has the next biggest performance jump, and the RTX 2080 has the smallest performance increase uh, as a whole from generation to generation, but it is there. There is a performance advantage if you want the best and you're willing to pay for the best. And the last thing to get from this video is that the GTX laptops, the 1070 and the 1080, really perform well, especially on a price to performance ratio scale. So if you're on a budget, definitely consider getting a GTX laptop instead of an RTX one. And if you're on an ultra small budget, a GTX 1060 is probably where it's at because you can get that for about $800 right now if you find a good deal. Now I wanna add a caveat to this whole video that this is the initial benchmarks. These graphics cards are new, drivers will be improved, and that the RTX cards do have ray tracing and DLSS. So if you're gonna be doing some 4K high resolution gaming, the RTX cards might have some performance advantages in that department or market later on down the road, especially as drivers and more games support RTX and DLSS. Now I hope you found this video helpful. I'll have some links in the description down below to the full benchmarks that I had on this video. So big shout out to ultrabookreview.com and Notebook Check. Uh, that is where I pulled about half these benchmarks from. And then of course, some of my own benchmarks from my own testing. I really wanted to make sure to have enough data for this video. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button and tap the notification bell. We'll see you guys in the next one. Brandon out.